For your penance, repair any wrong that you may have committed, and also for the next three nights to offer not only the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be, I'm sorry, thou who hast suffered wounds for us, but also to reflect upon the scripture that is prescribed by the church on this Passion Sunday. And so now, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority given unto me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live for others. Others sh shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. Lord, for us your wounds were suffered. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son has made the great holy and a place of hope for your people. May we who die in him also rise in him, him. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. 
seated. John, will you proclaim the word? Thus, <clears throat> thus says the Lord God, O oh, my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The response is, with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice to my voice in supplication. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has power over him. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, this illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. 
So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will arise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seeing what he had done, began to believe in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, followers of the way, as you came into the church today, you realize that there is a couple of differences. Today is Passion Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Lent. It marks the final two weeks of the life of Jesus Christ. We have all the statues and all the crosses covered in purple. It is to bring to mind to all of us that at this time there is a different feeling, a more somber feeling, a sadder feeling. For three years Jesus preached the good news. He healed the sick. He exercised demons. I recall of the story, and you've heard the story, about where John the Baptist was thrown into prison. And one day he sent two of his disciples with a simple question to the Lord. Are you the one who is to come, or do we wait for another? Jesus said, go and tell John what you see, not what other people have told you, but what you have seen and witnessed during the ministry of Jesus. The power of God was upon him. He brought sight to the blind. He made the deaf hear. He caused the cripple to walk. Today, we hear of another miracle. It is one of my favorite passages of Holy Scripture. It tells the story of Lazarus. How Jesus loved Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. They were not just acquaintances, they were friends. And so, when Jesus heard that Lazarus had died, he did not go immediately. And he explained that the glory of God would be manifested. In Holy Scripture, this is the last miracle that Jesus performed. Because he was going up to Jerusalem for the last time. And he knew what was awaiting him in Jerusalem. The sadness. That is why all the statues and the crosses are covered. To bring to all of us the wish for a deeper devotion and a belief that as Jesus cured the sick and preached the good news, he also offered words of hope to you and to me. In his words we find life. In his words, we find promises. And so, he went up to Bethany on his way to Jerusalem to, find, to have that final miracle take place. The raising from the dead, Lazarus. Now there are two other Stories of Jesus raising the dead back to life. Jairus' daughter and the widow who was grieving over her son who had died. 
Lazarus was to be, as they would say, the, the frosting on the cake. He was to raise Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, from the dead. Jairus' daughter had just died. They carried the, the son of the widow name outside where he had just died. But in the case of Lazarus, he was already dead for four days. <clears throat> Proof that indeed he was dead. And so a conversation takes place between Martha, who said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would have not died. But I know that whatever, she had faith, that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Beyond human comprehension. She knew that her brother was dead. But yet she still believed. And one of the greatest I am's that Jesus proclaimed in the Gospel of John, that is recited whenever there is a death from this parish or for many, many churches and parishes, the words that Jesus spoke to Martha, I am. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. He's saying that to all of us today. I am the resurrection. But then after making that statement, he said to Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe this? That the belief that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. You know, the shortest passage in Holy Scripture are three words. Some versions have only two. And how strong of a statement. Jesus wept. And so the Jews said, see how he loved him. My dear brothers and sisters, as we begin these final two weeks, the invitation is given unto all of you and your family and your friends to come and walk the way of the cross. <coughs> On Fridays when we have the stations, there are very, very few who have come. But the invitation is now given to you. Take the time. If you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, your Redeemer, the one who died for you, then give him a portion of your time. Walk the way of the cross. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating the only time that Jesus allowed tribute to be given to him, Palm Sunday. That following week is what we call Holy Week. It will be a time in which we will recall the Last Supper, the crucifixion, and most importantly, the fulfillment of the promise, the very resurrection 
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we become familiar with the story of Lazarus and his relationship to Jesus and Jesus just Jesus' relationship not only to Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, but his relationship to all of us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. and the unemployed, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all those who suffer in our world from sicknesses and illnesses, especially our brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors and nurses, first responders and all health care workers who strive daily to save others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray this day especially for all abused and neglected children, all abused and neglected animals, and for all victims of violence both here and abroad, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray this day for the blessings of all those men and women who serve in our armed forces, and we pray that God would keep them safe and return them safely unto their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the Polish National Catholic Church, especially Holy Name of Jesus, the congregants, their loved ones and families and friends. We pray this day to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for one another. <clears throat> that God would grant unto all of us wisdom and understanding, that we might grow closer unto him who died and rose for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we give unto you this day our intentions, and we ask that for your peace and blessing to rest all who are gathered in this most sacred church. Let us pray. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection, the second death, 
has no power over them. sacrifice, may we receive the promise of eternal inheritance. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. The suffering and death of your Son brought life to the whole world, moving our hearts to praise you with thanksgiving and glory. The power of the cross reveals your judgment on this world and the kingship of Christ crucified. Therefore, on this Passion Sunday, we join with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating, very humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Solomon in the heights, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. This morning, I ask that you please turn to page 88, where today we will offer the Eucharistic prayer number four, which is the canon of the Dutch Old Catholic Church. Blessed are you, Lord of all majesty and King of eternal glory, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. In him your word was made flesh, in him the fullness of your grace was revealed in splendor. In all things he fulfilled your will and glorified your name. He proclaimed your kingdom to us. He broke the power of darkness over us. He took our guilt upon himself. He reconciled us to you and unlocked the new paradise for us. As the way, the truth, and the life, he has revealed your love to us. He humbled himself and became obedient even to death on a cross and by rising restored our life. On the night in which he was betrayed to undergo that suffering which he himself had chosen, he took bread into his hands and lifting his eyes to you, his heavenly Father, he gave thanks. He blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Now may we join together and say, Your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim. Your resurrection we celebrate. Your return in glory we await. Therefore, Father, we remember his saving passion, his glorious resurrection, and his exaltation at your right hand. We await his coming in the fullness of majesty. We here set forth the sign of our faith in him, who offered you the perfect sacrifice and gained for us eternal salvation. Send your Holy Spirit, the giver of life and holiness, upon us and upon these gifts, the bread and wine of eternal life. Holy Spirit, come to us. Fill us with your gift of grace. Take these gifts from our hands, Lord God, as an acceptable sacrifice through which we offer ourselves to you so that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be a sharing in the body and blood of your Son. May all who receive these gifts from your heavenly altar always remain united with you, together with all your saints and chosen ones, with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, and with all the saints for whose memory we also keep this day with your prophets and apostles, with your martyrs and confessors, and with all who stand about your throne in praise and prayer. Bless your church throughout the world. Grant it unity and peace. Renew the earth according to your promise. Remember all peoples and grant that all nations may give you thanks, worshiping and praising your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever. 
forever and ever. Please turn to page 95, where we will continue with Holy Mass. For forever and ever, let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior ever gave us. Our participation in the blood of Christ, the bread, which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be unto you. Peace. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This morning, let us pray together the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful your teachings, and never let me depart from you. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you shall be filled. Receive the body and the blood of Christ.
but your dead shall live. Their corpses shall rise, awake and seen, you who lie in the dust. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of life and death, you have redeemed us with the precious blood of your Son. Through this Eucharist we have received. Keep us firm in the confession. His name, so that we may gain eternal life as he promised. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the unity of the Holy Spirit in our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon all of you, and may the grace of God be ever with you. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth and praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 